Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. My name is Mathun. And in today's video, I'll be talking about image classification. In my last video on orange, we learned how we can transform raw images into vectors and use these embeddings for clustering. The question is, can we do much more than clustering with images? Can we classify images? Can orange distinguish a dog from a cat? Let me introduce the data set, the raw data on which I will be working. The raw data is in D drive. There's a folder called as Mithun. Within this, there's another folder which is called as animals. There are two subfolder within this animal folder. The first subfolder is called as cat and the second subfolder is called as dog. This arrangement is very, very important because each subfolder is considered by Orange as an image class label. So if you have another subfolder, that will be treated as the third class. Let me look at cat folder. You can see multiple images of cats. This is the first image second, third, fourth, fifth, so on and so forth. We will be using these images to train the algorithm and then we will predict some of these images. Let me go back. Let me show you the images of dogs. This is the second subfolder and there are 15 images of dogs. So this is about my source data. I'd like to make one point here. That is, none of these images are mine. I have uh, downloaded these images from Google. So thanks to Google for making these images available. Let me show you the link. So this is the link that I have used to download all the images of docs. And this is the link that I have used to download all the images of cats. So credit must be given where it is due. Thanks to Google once again for making these images available. With this, I'll make a on to orange. The first challenge that I have is to load the image folder, to load all the images into orange. How do I load all the images of dogs and cats? To load the images, there is an option which is called as import images. You can click on image analytics. Once you click on image analytics, there are five different widgets that Orange displays. I will choose the first widget, namely import images. This widget helps us import images from a directory. Let me click on it. Let me double click on this particular widget. I can choose the browse option to specify the folder from where I will be downloading the images. This is the folder, the animal folder. So let me click on animal and say, select folder. As you can see here, orange displays a message saying there are 30 images belonging to two classes. So it's a good thing that orange has been able to recognize that there are 30 images and there are two categories. Let me close this dialog box. At this stage, I've loaded 30 images. The next step would be to display these images. How do I display images in orange? There's a widget which is called as image viewer. Let me click on this particular widget and establish a connection between import images and image viewer. Information will propagate from the first widget to the second widget. I'll right click and choose the option open. Let me close this particular message. As you can see here, Orange has correctly downloaded all the images from the source folder. So these are the images that you saw earlier of cats and dogs. Let me close this particular window. Now, what I'd like to do is, 
I'd like to put a data table and see the information of these images. So to put a data widget, I'll have to click on the data option. And here you can see what is called as data table. What does data table do? Data table displays the data corresponding to each of these images. Let me establish a connection between the source file and the data table. Double click on this. As you can see here, there are 30 images. Each of them belong to two different categories. Image name, images are there. You have the size, width, and height. Now, this is not the actual data, but this is metadata. What is metadata? It is data about data. This is not very useful for any machine learning algorithm because we can't train a machine learning algorithm using variables like size, width, and height. What do I do at this stage? What I need to do is to convert raw data into images. Let me reframe the problem. We need numbers which describe the content of these images. The metadata is not useful in machine learning. How do we obtain numbers? We will transform the raw images into their vector representation using a deep neural network, which can be trained, in fact, which, uh, which already has been trained on millions of real life images. So the goal is very simple. Take these images and transform these raw images into their vector representation using a deep neural network, which has already been trained on millions of real life images. The output of the transformation gives us vectors. These retrieved vectors are called as image embeddings. We embed our images into a multidimensional feature space. We need to put an image embedder as a next step. Image embedding sends images to the server and computes the embeddings remotely. So how do we convert these raw images to numbers? Very simple. I can scroll down, choose image analytics, and choose the third option called as image embedding. Let me delete one of these. Use image embedding option. Establish a connection between import images and image embedding. Let me double click on this. You can see here, there are multiple options that you have under the image embedder option. By default, we will be using Google's Inception V3 model. This deep neural network was trained on millions of images. They've used the ImageNet database. You can see here, may it be Inception V3, may it be SqueezeNet, VGGNet, or VGG19. Most of these <clears throat> image embedders have been trained on the ImageNet database. We also have other image embedders like Painters, DeepLock, and OpenFace. Right, so we have used Google's Inception V3 model, which was trained on ImageNet. Now, what is the output of image embedding? To look at the output of image embedding, what I'll do is I will put a data, with data table widget next to image embedding. Establish a connection here between image embedding and data table. You can see here, what has image embedder done? All these are your meta information, category, image name, image size, width, and height. N0, N1, N2, N3, N4 are all the vector representations of the images that we have been able to create. As you can see here, the last column is N2047. So we have 2048 new columns here. I'm saying 2048 because it starts from zero. So all these are nothing but the output of 
vector representation obtained for the images from deep neural network. Now I'm going to use these columns as the input columns to predict the images. So you can see here, this is the output for image embedding. So this is useful to me. Let me close this and show you the earlier data table. The earlier data table just had size, width, and height, which is not very, very useful. Now, after using the image embedder, you can see here, there are so many numbers, numeric columns that have been created. In fact, it is 2048. This is rich data that we have. Now, at this stage, what I'll do is, I will use a cross validation to check how well we can predict the animal type from its image. So let me connect a test and score to the image embedding. I'll just right click and choose this option, test and score. It takes some time to display the test and score. Now, I'll establish a connection between image embedding and test and score option. Test and score also needs a learner. We need a machine learning algorithm. One of the most popular algorithms is what is called as logistic regression model. Logistic regression is a good choice for this problem because it can predict binary classes. So let us connect a logistic regression model to this particular widget. Let me right click and choose the option logistic regression. You can see here, there's a logistic regression widget that appears. Now, what I'll be doing is, I will be establishing the connection between logistic regression and test and score widget. There are no errors, which means that we have been able to feed the data and train the data on the logistic regression model. Now, what is happening at the back end is the test and score widget performs a tenfold cross validation on our images and reports on different metrics like area under curve, classification accuracy, precision, and record. Let me just right click and choose open. You can see here, there is a message. I don't need to look at this message. This is the output of logistic regression model. Area under the curve is one. Area under the curve, higher the value of area under the curve, better the model. Remember that I'm using only 30 images. So area under the curve is on the higher side. Any number greater than 0 0.7 is something which we will be happy about. So if the area under the curve is less than 0 0.7, we would take the model results with a pinch of salt. Since I'm getting a high area under the curve, this is a good sign. Classification accuracy is 93%. The F1 score is 93%. We also have precision and recall. So this is the advantage of using the test and score. It performs a tenfold cross validation. Here it reports as five. If you want, you can just change this to 10 as well. I think in the earlier version, uh, it performed tenfold cross validation. Here, since I've chosen number of folds as five, by default, it is performing a five-fold cross-validation, but we can feel free to change it to 10 or 20 as well. So this is the output metrics. So the, the quality of the model is quite good. We have a high AUC, high classification accuracy, a high F1, a high precision, as well as a high recall. But this is not good enough. I like to see where our model went wrong. To check where the model went wrong, what I'll do is I will use a confusion matrix 
to i'll use a confusion matrix as the next step let me right click and simply say confusion matrix let me establish a connection between test and score with that of confusion matrix let me double click on the confusion matrix what orange does is along the row it displays the actual data that is dog and cat and along the column it displays the two classes dog and cat how do we read these numbers you can see here the row total is 15 and the column total is 15 out of the 15 images of dogs 15 images have been correctly predicted zero images have been assigned as cat so which means that our model has learned to identify a dog correctly because we are obtaining 100% correct classification the problem is with cats you can look at this out of the 15 cat images two images were incorrectly assigned as dog 13 images have been correctly predicted as cat so in identifying cat images the model is not that accurate i would like to examine the misclassification the diagonal elements here are the correct classification and the off diagonal elements are the misclassification so let me choose select misclassified once we select misclassified as a next step what we can do is we can attach a image viewer option and establish a connection let me open up this so this is the image which was misclassified by the logistic regression model this is the second image of cat which was misclassified so these two images have been misclassified let me open up the confusion matrix again you can see here these are the two misclassified images of cats which the model is incorrectly predicting as dog but the remaining 13 are correctly predicted so this is how we can build a classification model let me just quickly summarize what we have learned today we have imported the images and then we used an image embedder we used we used google's inception v3 image embedder once we used the image embedder we were able to obtain 2048 different columns these columns were used as the input variables to train the logistic regression model we were able to obtain a high level of accuracy we further used a confusion matrix to check which of these images have been incorrectly classified image clustering and image classification are two very very important problems and in today's session we've been able to learn how to use embeddings for image classification and further how to inspect and interpret the misclassified images so i thank you very much for uh, watching today's video i request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button thank you very much have a great day